John Lee has a Dharma talk where he compares life to taking a boat across an ocean. And the problem out in the ocean is there's no fresh water. For most of us, it's meditation is like stopping in a port, picking up some fresh water, putting it in the boat. And then we go out to sea, and then we discover that we've run out of water. And so we have to go back to port. And as a result, we don't get very far. And if we're not careful, the winds will blow us away from the coast, and we find ourselves without any water at all. In other words, when we meditate, we pick up a good sense of ease, sense of inner refreshment. It's like stocking up on water, and then we take it out and we pour the water all over the place. Then we have to come back and meditate some more, get some more water, back and forth like this. We never really stock up on there's enough, enough water that we really need. So the trick is not to pour the water out. What this means is learning how to maintain your center with the breath inside the body, even when you go outside and deal with other people. This is one of the big issues in any meditator's life, is how you maintain that center even though you've got to deal with the people around you. John Lee has another passage where he compares the meditator's mind to the starting out with concentration, you make the mind one, and then you turn it into zero. Now when you have zeros, there are two things you can do with it. Either you can put them in front of numbers, which they have no meaning at all, you don't read them, they don't count, or you put them after other numbers, in which case one turns into ten, and then a hundred, then a thousand, ten thousand. If the zero gets put after, you always suddenly find yourself with lots of issues. But if the zero gets put first, no matter how many zeros you have, they don't add anything, any burden to the mind at all. He says it's the same way with the, the mind becomes zero, and then it, you deal with other people, and what they say doesn't count. And it's interesting, he focuses on what other people say as one of the tests for a mind that's really at peace. The Buddha has a similar one in one of the Dhammapada verses. He says, when other people say harsh things to you and you don't reverberate, like a cracked gong, he said, that's, that's a good test that you've attained true peace of mind. It might seem strange. And why is it that the test is what other people say or how you react to what other people say? Well, the mind is very sensitive to this issue. And we learn very early in our lives that our happiness is going to depend on how other people treat us. And as children, we're surrounded by people who are a lot more powerful than we are. So there's always a sense of fear built into our relationships to the people around us. And so we start getting sensitive to other people's moods, sensitive to what they might do, what they might say. And our center of gravity goes outside, because we're afraid of them. And we try to put up a wall outside ourselves to protect ourselves from them. What happens is that our sort of psychic center of gravity gets moved outside the body. And if you've ever taken any martial arts classes, you know if your center of gravity is outside your body, you're in bad shape. You're in a weak position. Now the Buddha doesn't say to stop doing this and just be very selfish. He says there's a different way of approaching the whole issue of happiness. In other words, you find a source for happiness that doesn't take anything away from anyone else, so you don't have to be afraid of other people. When you're not afraid of them, you find that you can actually be more compassionate to them. So developing this center inside and maintaining it is not a selfish thing. It's not teaching you to be insensitive, it's just saying, put yourself in a stronger position. 
then trust that you're stronger, but not trying to go outside and fix up people's moods and all the other things that we think we can do with other people when we're talking to them. If you can stay inside and have a sense of confidence that you're strong inside, because after all, your source of happiness lies inside. And because it's not taking anything away from anyone else, you don't have to be afraid of them. Especially when you can get the, your awareness to fill the whole body and get the breath flowing smoothly throughout the whole body. This smooth flow of energy builds up a kind of force field. An image in the canon is the meditator is able to fill your, the body with awareness. It's like a door made out of solid wood. If you were to take a ball of string and throw it at the door, it wouldn't make any dent in the door at all. The mind filled with awareness, the breath energy flowing smoothly, is the same sort of thing. It's solid. It resists outside influences. When your awareness doesn't fill the body like this, what it says is like taking a stone and throwing it into a ball of clay. The stone makes a big dent in the clay. In other words, you're in a weak position, and you intuitively know you're in a weak position, so you scramble around and try to build up all sorts of defenses, and so much energy gets spent in the defenses, and the energy is outside the body, so it knocks you off balance. And you use up the, the water of your meditation, you use up the refreshment of your meditation very quickly this way. The trick, as a John Lee says, is to have a little distillery in the boat. So you can take the salt water, put it in the distillery, and it turns into fresh water. So everywhere you go, you've got your fresh water. Now, there's no matter where you go, you're right here, centered in the body. You're wearing a spill in the body, and you're not leaving the body unprotected, and you're not using up all your energy for those false outside defenses. You're creating a sense of energy here in the body and a sense of refreshment, and it's protecting you as well. And this way you can travel around the world, because there's salt water everywhere. And if you've got the skill, you can turn it into fresh water, as much fresh water as you want. So as you leave meditation, it's important that you watch to see how does the mind move, how does it go flowing out your eyes and ears. and into space outside your body. And if you catch it and bring it back in, how is it going to complain? There's, there's going to be a sense of fear and a sense of uncertainty about the whole thing of trying to stay inside. You feel, in the beginning, you may feel unprotected. Well, don't listen to those voices. Those are voices that took over your mind when you were a little child and didn't know anything. That was the best you could do at that time. Now you've got more skills, better skills, better understanding. So learn how to reason with that voice, saying, well, here is a good, solid place, a good, safe place, a secure place to be, right here inside the body. And you're operating from, from a position of strength. And just that much is that gift not only to yourself, but also the people around you. They all sense the difference as, as well. and makes your interaction a lot easier. So learn to have some trust for the sense of being inside the body. The awareness that fills the body, the breath energy that fills the body, it can protect you in a lot of ways. And it can provide the nourishment and the refreshment you need at all times. And the momentum develops in the practice. You keep on creating all the water you need. When you have more than enough, you can share it with the people around you. And your sense of what it means to be refreshed grows deeper and stronger. <laughs>